All right, so today we're going to take a look at frequency tables. Frequency tables are actually pretty easy to make from data. Uh, the hardest part is going to be the interval column, which gets a little bit more advanced later in this lesson. So why don't you go ahead and pause this video and write these notes down. Remember that examples and uh, definitions are the most important part. Don't forget the I can statements. Uh, those are important as well. Don't forget today's date at the top right hand corner as well. Don't forget your name. All right. So I'll scroll down as well so you can pause the video when that happens too. So here's the top part of our notes. And here's the bottom part of our notes. All right. Hopefully you paused the video and wrote those down now. So let me go through these things. All right. The whole point of today is to sort data into appropriate intervals using bins. These are known as frequency tables or bins. They get used interchangeably. Um, a frequency table looks like a lot like this. It has a title, has intervals, it has tallies, and the frequency of the tallies is really for us for counting. And then uh, we're going to see what we do with the tallies and the frequencies. The interval, though, is just a set of real numbers with the property that any number that lies between those two numbers in the set is also included in the set. So the interval, 0 to 4, includes all the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So if I had a list of data, if I had the interval from 0 to 4 right here, and I had a list of data, let me just get some quick data over here. Uh, again, this is just coming off the top of my head. Uh, how many numbers are between 0 and 4? Well, let's see here. I've got one here, so that's going to be a tally. Uh, a 2 fits in the 0 to 4. A 4 fits there. But a 6 doesn't. So how many numbers do I have between 0 and 4? Well, I have three of them. And that's the idea of all the words that we just wrote down. I'm going to erase this now. So uh, that's what intervals are. Uh, it also tells us what tallies are. Tallies are just marks to indicate how many times a value has occurred, like I just showed you. And then lastly, the frequency is just the number of those tallies. Let's get into some examples. All right, so I have a list of data here for how many seventh graders uh, did Mr. Craig's first period class slap today. Remember, if you're a master, this is uh, something you get to do. <laughs> I'm just kidding. How many 7th graders did Mr. Craig's first period class slap today? Well, I had a student who said six times. We had a student say seven times. Another student said five. I had two more students who said seven. Another student said eight, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to read through all those. But basically, we have these possible values, and we're just going to stick to a very simple interval right now. And that's this. So... Uh, four times, four times slapped, five times slapped a seventh grader, six times slapped a seventh grader, so on and and so forth. Here, uh, the low, you'll notice that the lowest value that are that is actually in here is a four, and then the highest value are is ten. And there's a bunch of tens in here. You guys are rude to them seventh graders. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a tally for every single time we see uh, one of these show up. Okay. Let's see here. We're gonna. I'm gonna cross off as I go. So I'm gonna say, well, there's a six here. So I'm gonna put a tally in for six, seven, five, seven, seven. Notice that each time I make a tally, I'm crossing something off. Then eight here. Number seven, six, nine. I gotta scroll down for that one really quick. Another seven. I'm going to make this kind of tally mark for that one now. Four, ten. I think you're getting the idea. So if you want to pause the video and finish this, or just listen to me while you finish this, I got a six here. Uh, you're fine. Uh, eight, another eight, nine, a five. It's really important to make sure that you're not missing any data. So as you're doing this, be really sure you know that you're crossing one off and then marking it. Okay. I think I'm on my last row now. Just stay scrolled down here. I got a seven, eight, four, ten, ten, ten. 10, makes a total of 5 tens so far, another 10, 5, 
and an eight. All right, it's really easy. We can uh, check how many pieces of data that I have here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So we have 30 pieces of data. We also could have done one, two, three times 10 and got 30 pieces of data here. Now I'm just going to check with my frequency. How many tallies are here? Well, that's three. How many tallies are here? It's another three. Tallies here are four. And then we have six, six, two, and another six. If we add these up, we should get a total of 30. So three and three is six, plus four is 10. Another six is 16. Another six is 24. Another two is 26. <clears throat> and then we have an, another six here. Uh, so let me make sure I add these right. Three, three is six. We got uh, four and six is ten. Six and two is eight. And then we have another six here. So we get sixteen, twenty-four, thirty. So we do get thirty here. All right. That's just a way you can make sure and double check that you got the same amount of data in your frequency table as the data given. Guys, this is a frequency table. Uh, they're, that, they're that easy, uh, especially when the intervals are very simple like this, and they're not the intervals that we just talked about. All right, why don't you go ahead and try it and fill out a, a frequency table. Uh, make sure you get enough intervals for all your data. And you could just do one at a time. Um, we notice, just go through here and kind of find your minimum value. Looks like our minimum value is 1. And then our highest value is 10. That means we're going to need 10 intervals. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 rows, 3 columns, 1 for the interval, 1 for the tally, and 1 for the frequency, and then a row for each possible value. And we're going to start looking at, in a second, how do we shrink how many intervals we have? So you don't have to do one for each uh, interval. So go ahead and pause the video and get this data in there. All right, so hopefully you pause the video. Uh, don't try to get away with that, guys. It's best to practice it and then see if you got it right. Um, I'm going to move through this part pretty quickly. Uh, so try to keep up if you can. All right, so we're going to... Scroll down here, got an eight, three, two, seven, a nine, a six, a four, a ten, in fact, two tens. I'm going to make sure I put two tens in there. Uh, eight. Seven, uh, six, ten, three fives, nine, got a one, a six, an eight, and a ten. I'm going to put two down here. An eight and a ten. A five and a one, two and an eight, four and a nine, a ten and an eight, seven and an eight, a nine, ten, and six. 9, 10, and a 6. All right, I'm going to fill out our frequency. We got two ones, two twos, one three, two fours, uh, four fives. We got four here. We got three sevens. We got six eights, four nines, and six tens. So you should have a frequency table that looks a lot like this. In fact, I wonder if I can zoom in and out here a little bit. Uh, it's not letting me zoom out, so we'll just go with this. So check your frequency table with this one, and hopefully you did okay. If not, uh, go back to that video and see how I did that. 
Uh, we can double check to make sure we have the same amount of data. Um, let's count how many pieces of data I have. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34 pieces of data. If I add all these up, I should get 34. So 2 plus 2 is 4. That's going to be plus 1 is 5. Plus 2 is 7. Plus 4 is 11. Plus 4 is 15. Plus 3 is 18. Uh, plus 6 is 24. Plus 4 is 28. Uh, plus 6 is 34. And that's exactly what I needed. So I got 34 pieces of data up here. And when we add this column up, we also get a total of 30. Four, and that kind of helps me confirm that I've got all my data in my table. Okay, so go ahead and get into uh, the next problem on Canvas. Uh, you're going to highlight those important parts first in your notes, summarize them, and then ask any questions you may have to the teachers that are in the room. Um, if you have any questions on the assignment on Canvas, also ask them as well.